Goalball is a sport played quite in quite a lot of countries sort of across the world. It's actually in the Paralympics. It has been for the past few years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's quite a large ball and it's audible, there's sort of bells in it. It's sort of similar to this one that Kane's got on. Yeah. There's sort of, you know, three or four bells in that. And then all participants are blindfolded so that everyone's on sort of equal playing ground. Um, and there's three players on a team and sort of the idea is to retrieve the ball that's just been rolled at you and then send it back and sort of get it past the team into the goal. student financing and send your letters about your disability in size 10 form. <laughs> My name's Rosie and I'm a student at York St John University. I'm studying English language and linguistics um, and I'm in the second year. Right. Rosie suffers from a visual impairment and has done since birth. Her condition is called congenital nystagmus which is also paired with astigmatism. This means that the eyes are perfectly healthy however the nerve link to the brain is damaged. This means that her eyes constantly move and flicker involuntarily. Through student finance, Rosie has been able to afford an omni-page reader and stand. This equipment allows Rosie the independence to study by herself without relying on others, something which due to her condition she has had to do a lot of in the past. The equipment on my right, the Omnipage reader and the stand, came to about £5,000, I believe. It's quite an expensive piece of equipment. Um, the equipment sort of for specialist needs is generally quite expensive at the moment, but there is a lot of new technology under development um, and the iPhone is sort of coming up to being just as accessible as a piece of kit like this. Um, I've had this about since about three months before my course, um, so it'll be about two, two years possibly, um, and it works really well, but it's, at the end of the day, it's not a human, but it bridges the gap between sort of sitting down and reading a textbook. Right. So how much of a difference does this make to just having the normal? It's just a lot more accurate, to be honest. Right, Whereas yeah. The, to keep Rosie up to date with equipment, she gets regular updates on new software and hardware funded by Student Finance. Representatives from Student Finance and other companies supplying the hardware will come out to set up and demonstrate to Rosie how the equipment is best used to aid her. I was always relying on people. Um, the only way I could describe it is clumsy, like the object of a long white stick, long cane, is to come into contact with obstacles before body touches them, but the pace I can walk with the dog compared to the pace of the long cane. I don't have to rely on like tactile clues like sticking to building lines. I can just give the dog regular encouragement like fire directions at me so like forward, straight on, left, right. Good boy, straight on pup, find home. Good boy cane, find home. Good boy, find home pup. Good boy. Good boy cane, find home pup. Rosie first applied for a guide dog when she was in sixth form. However, it was only until last year when she signed the paperwork for Kane. Since then, Kane has improved Rosie's life by aiding her, giving her more security and freedom. He's very sort of inquisitive, um, curious, cheeky, sort of. I don't know, I would use sort of cautious. Um, I mean, people tell me he's got these little eyebrow shaped things above his head. <laughs> they sort of raise one, and he's got like little ginger eyelashes, and yeah, apparently he's got a very characteristic face, and I think it totally reflects him. <laughs> um, the harness is perhaps the most important piece of kit. Um, when he's got this on, he knows he's got a job to do, he knows he's working. Um, the harness is, the handles come in different shapes and sizes. It just depends on how you work with the dog. 
um, it's sort of a metal frame with a leather handle um, and it says, please don't distract me, I'm working. Um, it sort of fits over his head and the strap here comes underneath his stomach and it clips in underneath. And we've got the reflective sleeve on there to um, sort of as a warning to anyone who's approaching in sort of car or anything. Uh, gold ball was invented back in the 40s uh, by a German man, an Austrian man, designed for a rehabilitation for blinded World War veterans. Um, it's played by, um, it's three aside, and it's designed for people that are blind and partially sighted. Um, all players wear blindfolds, so that everybody um, is on a level playing field in terms of sight. So, for example, whilst someone on our team is completely blind, um, if they wear eye shades at the same level as, as I would be under eye shades, although I'm fully sighted. Rosie does perform well. She's at the upper end um, of, the, of, the, of the players we've got in the squad. Um, she's probably our top performing female player. She tends to play centre, which is a role that's designed for people that have more of a defending role than an attacking role, which tends to be the wingers. But also the centre, they, they take on the world role like the captain of the team, so they, they kind of direct the play on the court as well, so they take a lot of responsibility, which she does quite well. One of the reasons I love goal was it changes people's perceptions of what disability sport is. It's, it's a growing sport and not many people have come across it yet. And sort of, sort of championing this, this new sport, if you like, I quite enjoy doing that. It was, it was once described as, as well, goal was once described as the greatest sport you've never heard of, which I quite like as a little catchphrase. I mean, everyone starts off with ambitions of like being a doctor or being a, being a fireman, policeman. Um, at the minute, I'm sort of not sure. Um, as long as I sort of pass and sort of um, live life and you know come into all different sorts of uh, well, mainly good experiences, but all experiences are good at the end of the day. So um, he's, I mean, he's on harness generally every day. It can be sometimes for a couple of hours to just a couple of minutes getting to lectures and stuff. So. I try and balance it out. If he doesn't work much for one day, I'll sort of bring him out. Ha <laughs> ha